So we are back in the studio with Lisa Waters Lane. She comes each week and just shares garden questions. What are other gardeners thinking about? What are they sharing? What are they asking? What are, what are we seeing? And that could be via email, via Facebook, via Instagram. I mean, it's coming from, or right here, actually in the garden center, uh, people asking questions. We see, uh, I don't know, how many baggies did you look at this week? <laughs> <laughs> People bring in Ziploc baggies full yes. of uh, death. bugs, Absolutely. death, <laughs> which we appreciate. We I'm do. glad you sealed it so we don't yes. spread it to all the other garden, all the other plants here. Mm -hmm. the, the, I get really nervous when I just see a twig coming in. It's covered in scale, covered in mildew, yeah. covered in, mm -hmm. we don't want that. So. No, no, baggies are greatly appreciated. Yep. And actually having it, actually bringing in a sample is hugely useful. Um, because sometimes when people describe oh, yeah. things, you know, those words, we all get mixed up in yeah. words, meanings. And so to have a sample in front of your face and we can look at it under a little microscope. Hey, it's is, very helpful. is the microscope working now? Did you it get that working. figured out? Oh, good. I know you mentioned it. And then I forgot I got another one at home. So yeah. it kind of has a mind of its own sometimes, but <laughs> been talking sweetly to it and it's been working lately. So pretty cool. Yep. So microscope, yeah. we got a microscope that just plugs right into the back of a huge screen tv slickest invention ever not a microscope like you can watch us look at it mm -hmm. together on oh, the yeah. big screen tv <laughs> it's really cool yes. so anyway easy to see uh spider mite with oh. and which is i've been seeing a lot of spider mite oh, out there tis the season so um if you especially some plants love spider mites love junipers yeah uh, they love the little Alberta spurs when there's certain things that they really yeah. love. Ivy is another one. So I kind of walked the neighborhoods and I walked by this one house and I went, oh my gosh. You knock on the door and go, hey, <laughs> you've got spider mites. Like, yeah. Get out of here. I don't got spiders. And the, the thing is, it's starting to really <laughs> we kill don't. off part yeah. of their yeah. juniper. So it's something, you know, go out in your, your yard and peruse a little bit. So spider mites are that real fine webbing. Uh, kind of looks like it has specks in it, or sometimes it can look dusty. Um, but it is definitely something you want to get on top of right away. Had had them on use, Y-E-W, mm -hmm. oh, a couple of years ago. And I took my phone out just with a black screen, tapped the foliage over the black screen without the power on. Mm -hmm. And if you see dust crawling around the screen, <laughs> you've got spider mites. It is not just one. You'll see like the screen is covered mm -hmm. with dust crawling around. And they've got a scarifying mouth part. So they kind of scrape the tissue off by the bazillions mm -hmm. till the plant starts to lose its tissue and it can no longer create photosynthesis. And so it can no longer take in nutrients from the sun and the plant dies. It yeah. succumbs. You can literally kill the, <clears throat> this thing you can hardly see can literally kill the plant. Mm -hmm. so be aware of it. That's our, our public service announcement. Danger, right danger, Will Robinson, <laughs> danger. But we do have other questions. Our first question is from Kurt in Prescott. He's got a new neighbor that now he's looking from his kitchen window into their bathroom window. <laughs> and he wants to block that. He's up yeah. on a ridge line where the wind blows yeah. and blows and blows. So he needs something tough that can get fairly tall, six to eight feet. And take that wind and the abuse. So is that Kurt with a C or Kurt with a K? <laughs> <Is> that, <laughs> sorry. Didn't mean to choke you up there. Sorry. Allergy's still going on. Okay. So Kurt, yes, you need to be careful. These are ridgelines. You need plants that can take the wind. And I'm sure what you didn't say was <laughs> you've got great views and no soil. So it seems like those ridgelines, all the soil kind of settles and runs. So you get rocks or soils in between the boulders. We almost make little pockets for plants to go into. Uh, there are certain plants that are gonna love that. Some are going to hate that. What to look at. So a window's typically, oh, I don't know, six to eight feet up off the ground. So it sounds like Kurt's wanting something six to eight feet maybe taller and it's a neighbor. So it's a side yard. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing some assumptions. Kurt, take a picture, bring it in. We can do so much more with that. But anyway, we, we look at so many things. We could probably help you with that. Look at number one, number one seller, red tipped photinia. There's one called red rocket. Was that the name? Red dynamite, red dynamite, dynamo, dynamo, red dynamo, uh, um, 
red tip Votinia. It gets up about head high, a little bit taller, thick as can be. We shear it or hedge it quite often, and it's quite handsome. Mm -hmm. Another one, if it's a side yard and you've got a fence, you just need something to crawl up it, you could look at, at, at vines. So we use that often on side yards. So honeysuckle, Virginia creeper, uh, uh, gosh, there's so many. Uh, uh, um, what's the one with the red flower? Trumpet, Trumpet vine. vine. There's a bunch of them. They'll grow up to the top of the wall and about two feet above. So you can kind of picture how far that's going to go up there. And vines are very strong, especially the native ones mm -hmm. at taking our wind and our sun. I would say the one that I like the most, just my personal, uh, I like silverberry or Ellie Agnes. It's a native plant. It's an evergreen, gets up well above head high width wise, but it, it's as, it's as it's as tall as red tip Photinia, but way stronger. It doesn't get the disease. Animals don't eat on it. It's stronger. And once it gets up to size, you don't have to water it again ever. No care. So Eliagnus or silverberry <clears throat> is the native one. A companion to that would be Cotone Easter yeah. or Cotton Easter is how it's kind of spelled. But there's one called... Um, Red, red clusterberry. clusterberry. Yeah, red clusterberry cotoneaster. Very fast grower. It might be too big for a side yard. That's one, take a picture. We can, it helps us a lot to get you the right. We're, when we look at a picture, we're looking at what else is growing there. So companion plants. We're looking at shadowing because now it's north, south, east, west. Mm -hmm. And then we're trying to, we might ask you what neighborhood you live in because we know the soils what kind of soil Southview has as opposed to, you know, quail wood. We'll just kind of know all that. And so we might help you with that so we can get the right plant in the right spot. Like uh, red clusterberry cotoneaster, tremendous plant, mm -hmm. fast growth, <clears throat> white flowers in spring, red flowers through the winter. Red berries. Oh, right. Yeah. Red berries through the winter. Quite striking. It is. What do you think of junipers? What of like oh, a, like a yeah. Spartan juniper? Or which yeah, juniper? sure. Or, or or even your your uh, blue arrows. They're Ooh. they're narrow but tall. Mm -hmm. Looks quite striking down that that in between mm -hmm. you and your neighbor looking in. So we can help you with privacy. That's one you probably instead of just winging it, uh, you probably need to know more. I dock my. Uh, I stub my toe. Do you know what's wrong? Going, oh, I can't tell you. Hey, doc, I need to. I need new hair implant, implants. Uh, well, let's see what color it is. Let's see more. It's a bad analogy. We'll, we won't go down that path anymore. So anyway, what else you got? Don't, don't make me laugh. It's not good. All right. Uh, James is in Prescott. He put a new lawn in in March. So okay. New lawn coming up. Great. Wants to know it's getting warmer. Yeah. Should I change my watering frequency and length or... What do you recommend for new lawns? So watering, specifically lawns. So d don't ever change how long it runs. That Just get rid of that variable. Otherwise, you will confuse yourself yeah. till you just don't know what to do anymore. Find out how, how long it takes to water a lawn well, or a plant, tree, shrubs, whatever. And then don't ever change that. You always run it for 32 minutes or however long you're doing yours. Mm -hmm. uh, and now all you're dealing with is how frequent should I do it? Way easy variable than how long, or should I change the emitter head, or should I change, just, just find out what makes them happy at any season. And then all you're playing with, how many, how many days do I skip before I run it again? Mm -hmm. So my guess is mm -hmm. right now we're getting to the 80s, close to 90. You're getting some wind. It's maybe not quite humid yet. The monsoons aren't quite here. I'm guessing you are with a brand new lawn every other day. That's mm -hmm. be my guess. Start with that. You're probably every third day or so, maybe twice a week. Right now, I'd maybe bump it up. Take one day out of in between those water cycles and start with that. The great thing is lawns are really good at talking to you. They start to lay down. You walk on them. You can see your feet. Just when you see that, you know, oh. Let me just water it a little bit, not longer, more frequently. So that's it for this, this segment. Ken and Lisa Lane, the Mountain Gardeners, be right back after this. Mm -hmm. 